हेलो एवरीबॉडी एंड वेलकम टू अभिमन्यू आई एस माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर एच एस सिद्धू आई हैव बीन मैंटोरिंग यू पी एस सी सिविल सर्विसेज एक्सपीरियंस फॉर मोर देन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स आई हैव ऑथर्ड सम बुक्स ऑल्सो द बुक्स हैव बीन पब्लिश्ड बाय मेग्रो हिल यहाँ हमने इशूस एंड एनालिसिस को लेकर के एक सीरीज स्टार्ट की है इस सीरीज में हम यू पी एस सी एग्जामिनेशन के परस्पेक्टिव से इम्पॉर्टेंट इशूज़ को डिस्कस करते हैं एनालाइज करते हैं मेरा आज का लेक्चर इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन से रिलेटेड है और जो टॉपिक आज मैं डिस्कस करने जा रहा हूं दैट इज़ इंडो पैसेफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क फॉर प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड इंडिया सो आज के इस लेक्चर में हम इन ब्रीफ इंडो पैसेफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क को डिस्कस करेंगे हमारा मेन फोकस इंडिया को इसको ज्वाइन करने के क्या क्या बेनिफिट्स होने वाले हैं एंड इंडिया के कंसर्न्स क्या हैं इंडो पैसिफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क को ज्वाइन अगर इंडिया करता है तो व्हाट आर द चैलेंजेस फॉर इंडिया वी विल डिस्कस ऑल दोज वी विल रिमेन फोकस्ड ऑन इंडिया एंड इंडो पैसिफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इंडो पैसिफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क इन डेप्थ ओके सो वी विल रिमेन अगेन आई एम टेलिंग यू वी विल रिमेन फोकस्ड ऑन द India and Indo-Pacific Economic Framework in today's lecture. Before moving ahead on the lecture, let me tell you that at Abhimanyu IS, we are conducting course for UPSC Civil Services Examination, targeting 2023 and 24. This is a one-year course for the prelims as well as the mains examination also. and uh, you can join the offline mode at, or the online mode whichever you like for more details you may contact at this number 7347432666 and uh, if you want to join directly you can click on the link which will be given in the description box so let us move on the topic now indo pacific economic framework for prosperity so this is a framework which is related with the prosperity of the indo pacific region and it comprises of the countries from the indo pacific region so that is why first of all let us know that uh, what do we mean by the indo pacific region so indo pacific region is a geographic region which extends from this which extends from this eastern coast of uh, africa up to the western coast of americas so this is the indo pacific region now brief introduction about the indo pacific economic framework for prosperity because this is a class related with the issue analysis that is why i will not go in much detail of the indo pacific economic framework rather we will focus on india and indo pacific economic framework what are the benefits what are the opportunities for india what are the concerns of india related with the indo pacific economic framework and so all these things we will discuss in today's lecture that is why i will not cover much detail of the indo pacific economic framework you can say so it is a us led economic group in the indo pacific region formed to build fair secure and sustainable economies so what is indo pacific economic framework it is a framework in the indo pacific region which comprises of the various countries from the indo pacific region not all countries and uh, its purpose is to build fair secure and sustainable economies its ultimate aim is to contribute to cooperation stability development and peace within the region so indo pacific economic framework is there to promote cooperation stability development and peace in the indo pacific region it is a critical part of us president joe biden's plan 
to counter China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Because China and US are the competitors in today's world, so China's influence is growing in the Indo-Pacific region. To counter that growing influence of China in the Indo-Pacific region, the US President Mr. Joe Biden, uh, Mr. Joe Biden has chalked out a strategy to counter the growing influence of China in the region. So this is about this. So in the map you can see the 14 countries which are part of this Indo-Pacific economic framework for, for prosperity. Means these are the 14 countries that are the members of this framework. The countries are India, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, Australia and uh, New Zealand. There is Japan, Korea, uh, Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, US and uh, Fiji also. Fiji joined few days after the formal launch of the Indo-Pacific economic framework. So at present there are 14 members to this framework. So pillars or uh, modules of the Indo-Pacific economic framework. There are uh, four pillars or four modules of the framework. One is the fair and uh, resilient trade. Second is supply chain resilience. Third is clean energy decarbonization and infrastructure. Fourth is taxation and uh, anti-corruption. But the US is also seeking to include digital economy issues like cross-border flows and uh, localization of data. So the four modules are fair and resilient trade, supply chain resilience, clean energy decarbonization in in and infrastructure, taxation and uh, anti-corruption. But the US is also seeking to include digital economy issues like cross-border flows and localization of data in this. Indo-Pacific economic framework is not a free trade agreement. It should be noted. The joint statement issued on the launch of the Indo-Pacific economic framework said that cooperation in the digital economy would be part of uh, the efforts under the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. On 24th of May, on the launch of this Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, a joint statement was released and uh, according to that uh, joint statement that uh, cooperation in the uh, digital economy would also be sought as part of the efforts under the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. What are the benefits to India? of joining the Indo-Pacific framework because this is an issue analysis class I have already told you we are not going in much details of Indo-Pacific framework. We will remain focused on India's interest in the Indo-Pacific economic fr framework or India's concerns related with the Indo-Pacific economic framework. So what are the various benefits to India of joining the Indo-Pacific economic framework? So as far as the various benefits are concerned, first benefit is uh, it will help India's act east policy by giving an opportunity to India to engage more with East Asian countries. You know, India launched a low east policy during the time of uh, President P.V. Narasimha Rao and uh, when Mr. Narendra Modi uh, joined as the Prime Minister of India, he modified that policy and uh, renamed the policy as Act East policy. So Act East policy means uh, India is focusing on its uh, eastern neighbors or on the, uh, on the countries which are lying to the east of India. So these are the Asian countries obviously, 
so that is why because uh, those asian countries are members of the indo pacific economic framework some of those asian countries are member of the indo pacific economic framework so that is why it will help india's act east policy it will boost india's act east policy and it will help india to engage more with its with the east asian countries second is it is important for india in the wake of growing china's influence in the indo pacific you know china is becoming aggressive day by day there are uh, issues related with china uh, in the south china sea also and there are other issues also in the indian ocean region also uh, china is increasing its influence day by day china is growing its influence in the indo pacific region and uh, uh, that is uh, a concern for india as well because india is also uh, one of the major regional powers and emerging regional power we can say and moreover india doesn't have cordial relations with the china there are so many issues which are uh, lying unresolved between india and china so mainly the border issues territorial issues are there okay. so that is why it is important for india to join such a framework that could uh, give the moral political as well as the other support to india in the time of need so next is a uh, open free and inclusive indo pacific will boost trade and commerce in the region so because if the indo pacific region is open if it is free if it is inclusive inclusive means uh, all the countries of the region uh, if are able to uh, you can say uh, use the resources or uh, use this maritime route freely without any obstruction without any uh, threat from any body so that will be good for boosting the trade and commerce in the region as well reducing reducing reliance on china for essential imports by de-risking supply chains will benefit india also because uh, uh, the major point is the uh, how to secure the supply chains this is an important concern in the indo pacific economic framework and uh, you know that uh, resilience of supply chains is very much important uh, because we have seen in the covid times now we have seen uh, during the time of this uh, uh, ukraine and russia conflict also that uh, the uh, that uh, supply chains are very much vulnerable which got disrupted uh, due due to some you can say natural calamity or some Uh, we can say this covid like uh, pandemic or uh, some uh, war or some political issues uh, which which uh, you can say prevail in the region so that is why uh, because when the supply chains got got disrupted then the economies are hit very badly so therefore it is important uh, for india as well to de risk the supply chains to secure the the supply chains as well as to reduce its influence on china also for essential imports and uh, joining this group indo pacific economic framework uh, will help india in this matter in this way as well okay. so it will provide a boost to india's service trade also because india is a major country that exports the services particularly the information technology services uh, services in the field of uh, information technology software industry that is very well known in india so that is why such type of association such type of uh, collabor collaboration or joining a framework of such type uh, will boost india's uh, service trade uh, as well the focus of ipef on clean energy and decarbonization will support india's efforts to transition to a net zero economy you know that uh, india has a goal uh, to uh, you can say achieve the net zero economy uh, in the years to come 
सो दैट इज वाई दिस इंडिया ज्वाइनिंग ऑफ द इंडो पैसेफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क विल सपोर्ट इंडिया यू कैन से टारगेट ऑफ दिस नेट जीरो टारगेट ऑफ ट्रांजिशन टू ए नेट जीरो इकोनॉमी ओके सो बिकॉज इंडो पैसेफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क हैज वन ऑफ द पिलर्स दैट इज रिलेटेड विद दैट डी कार्बोनाइजेशन क्लीन एनर्जी एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो द सो दिस यू कैन से मॉड्यूल ऑफ द इंडो पैसेफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क विल कॉम्प्लीमेंट द इंडियाज गोल ऑफ ट्रांजिशन टू ए नेट जीरो इकोनॉमी इन द ईयर्स टू कम इट विल फैसिलिटेट इंडियाज एफर्ट्स टू ग्रो इन टू ए ग्लोबल हब फॉर मेकिंग इलेक्ट्रिक वहीकल्स एंड ट्रांजिशनिंग टू ए रिन्यूएबल डिपेंडेंट इकोनॉमी ओके सो बिकॉज इंडिया इज बिकमिंग ए हब ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल वहीकल्स ओके सो दैट इज वाई इंडिया ज्वाइनिंग इंडो पैसेफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क विल यू कैन से फैसिलिटेट इंडियाज एफर्ट्स टू एफर्ट्स इन दिस रिस्पेक्ट एंड ट्रांजिशनिंग टू ए रिन्यूएबल्स डिपेंडेंट इकोनॉमी moro moreover india is uh, shifting its focus from the conventional energy to the non conventional energy that is the renewable energy that is the solar energy wind energy hydroelectricity etc etc so india's joining of indo pacific economic framework will definitely help india in this respect as well because one of the modules of the indo pacific economic framework is clean energy decarbonization and infrastructure so indo pacific economic frameworks efforts to counter money laundering bribe bribery and regional collation of a good of a good tax practices are causes that india has supported and contributed to for several years because india is affected by this economic malfunctioning that is the money laundering bribery and uh, you can say region collation of uh, good tax practices regional collation of good tax practices are causes that india has supported and contributed to for several years okay. so this is there because india is always in favor of curbing the money laundering bribery and india is also in favor of uh, developing the good tax practices okay so that is why india's joining the indo pacific economic framework will help india in all these respects also okay next india's concerns but uh, though there are some benefits which we see that india can gain by joining the indo pacific economic framework but it is not without the risks it is not without the challenges it is not without the concerns okay so what is the first concern first concern is data localization okay so what is data localization data localization means to uh, means uh, collecting processing and storing the data within the country so that is what we mean by the data localization so that the data of the citizens of the country should remain within the country so this is what we mean by the data localization so india and us have differences on data localization in india okay so the two countries are uh, are uh, you can say uh, the two countries have different opinions different thinking on the data localization norms in india india is very strict on data localization for various reasons because legal hindrances in importing data stored outside let's suppose india's data is stored outside the country okay. so if if uh, tomorrow the gov the government of india or for the law enforcement the law enforcement agencies want some data from uh, the want that want the data that is stored outside the country then there would be a legal process which 
which must have to be followed while uh, importing the data from the country where it has been stored. Okay. So, so that is why it will create a problem in the law enforcement in India. The data required for the law enforcement or the data required for other purposes okay, would uh, uh, not be imported to India without the legal clearance from those countries. That is why this is one of the major concerns. Let us suppose India's data or the data related with the Indian citizens or the data related with India is uh, stored in the US and uh, if tomorrow some law enforcing agency uh, wants some data uh, from the US then uh, you can say there may be a legal hurdle. Okay? So, the law of the US may be different on the export of data. So, next is privacy of citizens and misuse of data stored outside. So, the next concern is about the privacy of the citizens okay? and uh, uh, because the citizens privacy is one of the primary concerns for the government of India, if the data related with the citizens of India is a uh, uh, stored outside outside India so that data can be misused which cannot be good for the uh, national security of India as well and uh, uh, you can say the privacy of the citizens of India can also be at stake in this respect. Inaccessibility of data stored outside due to technical and physical breakdown. Okay. So, accessibility of data will be you can say denied to India or uh, accessibility of data would become difficult for India in case of the technical snags or in case of the physical breakdown okay? because uh, there are uh, uh, you can say undersea cables through which the data is uh, you can say transported uh, from one uh, region to another. So, there may be some physical breakdowns or there may be some technical snags due to which India may not be able to get the data when it will require. So, this is the one concern and because the point is that uh, India's strictness on data localization is not acceptable to the US because it affects US firms in India. Actually, as far as the Indo-Pacific economic concern, uh, sorry, at, as well as the Indo-Pacific economic framework is concerned, it seeks to pursue high standard digital economy rules with regard to cross-border data flows and data localization. Okay? So, it wants that uh, there should be uh, rules that, that should be framed regarding the cross-border data flow and data localization. So, this is one of the requirements of the Indo-Pacific economic framework and moreover US does not like the India's strictness on data localization. That is why this is the difference between the India and the US and this is a big concern for India as well and let us see how this concern is resolved. Okay? So, only then we can say uh, India's involvement in the or the degree of India's involvement in the Indo-Pacific economic framework shall be decided. So, this is one important issue. Next is e-commerce rules. India's apprehension of international e-commerce rules is another issue. Okay. You know that uh, there were talks which were held in the WTO, World Trade Organization. Okay. And India refused to join those talks uh, okay, related with the e-commerce at the WTO because India's concern is that uh, such type of uh, talks or such type of agreements, such type of uh, uh, you can say uh, treaties or uh, uh, any type of uh, uh, you can say consensus that would uh, uh, you, you can say favor the rich nations only. Right. So, let us read it. India's apprehension of international e-commerce rules is another issue. Even India refused to join e-commerce talks with, at WTO, uh, which will serve as the basis for any international agreement on e-commerce. India's apprehension, what was India's apprehension was that 
such rules framed at the wto would serve richer nations owing to the nature of a developed market system and penetration by online firms in the retail space because the richer nations have developed e-commerce markets and the e-commerce firms or the companies of the richer nations have deep penetrations into the developing countries like india so that is why the india's concern is that uh, if any such uh, international uh, you can say uh, understanding is developed as far as the e-commerce is concerned that will go in favor of the rich nations and that would not be in favor of india that is why india is apprehensive as far as the e-commerce rules are concerned so that is there okay. so uh, next is the labor standards okay. so indo pacific economic framework seeks strong labor standards but india's labor standards have actually become weaker you know okay. how in india there is demand from industry to make standards and regulations more flexible flexible because uh, in india the corporate sector is uh, dominating the political decisions as well is influencing the political decisions as well so that is why there is demand from the corporate sector there is demand from the industry to make standards and regulations uh, more flexible workers in india have to work for longer hours and are paid less so this is the real condition in india that uh, the workers are less paid and they have to work for longer hours and even at some places the conditions uh, of work or the working environment is not that much good due to the corruption etc the various regulations related with the labor are not implemented properly okay so labor laws in india are not implemented properly due to the corruption in the regime all these issues india will have to address being a part of the indo pacific economic framework so if india becomes a member of the indo pacific economic framework framework actually india has given its consent to join the indo pacific economic framework so now let us see the uh, so this is a particular concern for india as far as the labor standards are concerned because uh, uh, indo pacific economic framework wants the highest uh, the high labor standards should be uh, you can say uh, put into place right uh, so but uh, as far as the india's concern is concerned uh, uh, here there is not that much progress as far as the labor standards are concerned uh, right one issue is the corporate sector and the second issue is that uh, labor laws are not implemented properly due to the corruption in the country and uh, so india will have to address all these issues being a member of the or being a part of the indo pacific economic framework that is there okay so high standard regulations the us suggests working on high standard regulations for trade environment and uh, trans transparency etc okay the us suggests uh, working on high standard regulations for trade environment and uh, transparency etc but indian institutions lack the depth to address the regulatory issues because india doesn't have that experience so far while the other countries of the indo pacific economic framework have that kind of experience so they will be ahead of india so the question is that uh, uh, that uh, how much sensitive and how much concerned will the other members of the indo pacific economic framework will be to the concerns of india in this respect okay particularly the usa so indian institution lack the depth to address these regulatory issues both in terms of nature of standards and the institutions that are there to implement the regulations okay so indian institutions are yet not prepared for that to implement the uh you can say such type of high standard regulations right because mm, there is no experience no exposure related with that so far okay next is uh, uh all other countries in the indo pacific economic framework has a certain amount of preparedness on rule making 
in the subjects that the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework will engage. As I have already told that uh, the other countries of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework are, some of the countries are members of the OECD, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Some of the countries are uh, members of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Some of the countries are members of the uh, that is the CPTPP. Okay. So, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement on uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. So, some are members of that. So, so, so they are having that type of exposure. But India is neither a member of the CPTPP nor a member of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. It is not, it, it is n not a member of the OECD even. So, that is why India does not have that type of exposure because uh, so far it is not a member of any such organization that is related with the, uh, the free trade or like that. Okay? So, that is there. So, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework members that are OECD members as well, uh, US, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand. So, so these countries do have the exposure of uh, such type of high standard regulations that is there. Okay. And leading South Asian associations, Singapore and Malaysia, right? So, these are the countries which have exposure. Even as I have told you, some countries are the members of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership and some countries are the members of the CPTPP. So, that is why they have the exposure uh, related with the such high standard regulations, okay? How to, uh, you can say, uh, make such high standard regulations, how to implement such how, uh, high standard regulations, how to supervise those, etc. So, India is an outlier in these. Outlier in these means India is not a member of uh, uh, this OECD, India is not a member of RCEP, India is not a member of CPTPP. So, that is why India does not have that much experience related with this. So, the next is uh, uh, India does not fit into the Indo-Pacific economic framework. So, this is a very much important point here because the Center for Strategic and International Studies which is CSIS of United States uh, has also described uh, India as possibly not being an ideal partner for Indo-Pacific economic framework under the current conditions. Under the current conditions means uh, because uh, Indo-Pacific economic framework is particularly an uh, uh, framework, is, is particularly a framework that is there to counter the growing influence of China in the Indo-Pacific region. But there are certain platforms, uh, right, where uh, India and uh, China are members, okay, where India and China work together, like uh, SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, there is the BRICS as well, right, and uh, there is that uh, new development bank also. So, there are certain, you can say, such type of organizations where both India and China work together. One point is that. And uh, the second important point is that ar as we have discussed earlier that India is not yet prepared for the high standard regulations because it does not have that type of exposure so far. So, that is why the, this CSIS, uh, Center for Strategic and International Studies of the US has said that uh, India as possibly not being an ideal partner for Indo-Pacific economic framework under the country under the current conditions. But at the same time, this Center for Strategic and International Studies has said that, uh, right, uh, that uh, India's exclusion would raise questions on the effectiveness and functioning of the Indo-Pacific economic framework because India is a major country in the Indo-Pacific economic framework. India is sitting at the heart of the Indian Ocean. So, therefore, uh, and moreover, seeing the uh, size of economy, seeing the size of population, seeing the geographical size of the country, we can say that it is one of the important countries in the world. So, that is why any such type of, uh, uh, you can say, arrangement okay, between the countries, uh, particularly in this Indo-Pacific region, uh, without India, 
would be questionable its function would its, its functioning would remain questionable whether it will be successful or not that is the question okay so the next is uh, uh, the next is other risks to india so russia factor one important factor is russia factor because russia because uh, india is uh, one of the close allies of russia okay so india's defense partnership with russia is well known even russia is a, a time tested friend of india okay and uh, moreover seeing the current uh, scenario uh, that uh, growing association between the pakistan china and growing association of china with russia and uh, seeing the relations of pakistan and china with india so it is uh, uh, not uh, wise for india or it is not possible for india to ignore russia at this juncture so this is another risk because uh, uh, the uh, rivalry between russia and uh, us has increased in the past years and, and particularly this from february onwards okay when the severe sanctions have been imposed on the russia by the us in the wake of this uh, ukraine conflict okay so that is why this is important for india to consider the russia factor also second is the foreign policy related okay so india is uh, famous or india is well known on the international platform for its uh, foreign policy that is the non aligned country okay so india remained neutral in the world politics since you can say its independence okay during the cold war india preferred to uh, keep equal distance from both the countries that is the us as well as the russia okay so it uh, de need to uh, you can say uh, de need to tilt towards any one particular country us or russia so that is why right so it remained away from that type of politics uh, and india is known for its uh, non aligned stance so so that is why india's foreign policy would come into question okay so if india uh, gets so much tilted towards the us in the present scenario so this can be there okay second is next is diplomatic disadvantage to india because uh, india is a major advocate of uh, uh, reforms in the un security council particularly and, and and india aspires to become a permanent member of the us security council with with the veto power but you know there are two countries that are not uh, that don't have so good relations with the us at present that is the china and the russia and both those countries are the permanent members of the us security council with the veto power seeing their influence and seeing the veto power they can exercise there uh, at the time of the voting right or uh, uh, india may remain disadvantaged as far as its uh, uh, you can say uh, stance or uh, as far as its uh, uh, aspiration of uh, uh, becoming a permanent member in a un security council also so that is one point okay so next is india's dilemma as far as india's dilemma is concerned this is this has been seen recently this has been exposed recently because very recently uh, there was a uh, you can say virtual meeting of indo pacific economic framework on trade it was chaired by the us trade representative usdr which we say so in this meeting india preferred not to join as a member instead india preferred to join as an observer so india participated in this meeting as an observer not as a member right it means india is still weighing its options okay india is still uh, you can say uh, we can say cautious about this that uh, uh, what Uh, whether the consequences of india's more involvement in the indo pacific framework uh, okay uh, go in favor of india or may it uh, uh, you can say uh, backfire on india 
even so these are the various concerns of india okay but in totality we can suggest for india that uh, uh, before moving ahead india should uh, weigh all the options okay uh, whatever the risks and whatever the benefits to india okay so every opportunity comes for a cost so that is why if india uh, involves deeper into the indo pacific economic framework obviously india would have to bear some cost for that uh, and we have to see that uh, whether the cost that we have to bear for that uh, uh, would be uh, you can say uh, uh, would be bearable or not right and we should weigh that cost with the with the benefits that we are expecting from joining the indo pacific framework only then we should take a uh, such type of decision and we should uh, uh, move further in the indo pacific framework so this was all about the today's topic right so regarding any doubts you can uh, put your comments you can raise your doubts in the comment box and i will definitely answer all your queries all your doubts okay hope you have enjoyed this lecture thank you very much and all the best mm -hmm.